You guys have no idea how many of these diet wokes I had to pour down for this experiment. <laughs> the links that I will go to for, I was going to say science, but I didn't say science, man. This is like, this is me screwing around in the garage trying to figure something out. Playing, having a good time. Maybe we'll learn something though. Who knows? Who knows? So in my last video, I cast an, a plaque that was made out of aluminum and I cast it. Uh, and then I wanted to anodize it. And so I went through the process. I followed, I linked Mark Pressling's video um, on how he does it, anodization. And uh, I recreated his, his setup here in my garage. And I redid it. And it didn't work right. Just, it didn't work right, right? It came out cool. I was really happy with the finish, but it wasn't what I needed. <laughs> I liked it, but it wasn't what I was looking for. And uh, then someone said, well, you know, you really can't cast, or you really can't anodize cast aluminum. Oh, okay. Well, then I ran across the site and I'll link it down in the description, which had some pretty cool information uh, about the various alloys. And I really I encourage you to go get this, grab the PDF that's, good, that's in the description, check it out. There's some information about it. They don't have a lot of alloys, and they've got probably half a dozen, seven, six, seven, eight alloys. But they show their composition, and they show what they're good for, what they're bad for, uh, various, various characteristics of the, of the, uh, the alloys. And I thought that was interesting because it shows the alloy that I use. I use an alloy called 319. Uh, 319 is a high silicon alloy. It's got about six or seven percent silicon in it. Um, so it's fairly high percentage of uh, the metal is silicon. Granted, it's like 88 percent aluminum, but you know, and there's a bunch of trace stuff in there as well. And one of the things I saw on that thing was that um, it doesn't anodize well. <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> um, it doesn't anodize well. It does pour well. Uh, it's very liquid. Uh, the fluidity is good on it. Uh, but um, the anodization is not good. And, of course, now there is a polishing characteristics of it. I thought that was interesting. Well, then I, for, for whatever reason, I decided, well, let me look at some of these other alloys. And I saw on the other alloys that um, there were alloys that actually did anodize well. And I thought, well, that's weird because I was told you can't anodize cast castings. But what I saw in there was that they have a very low silicon um, content, uh, very low, uh, sometimes none, right? No silicon in it. And so that, 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 was, that was interesting. Well, and then just for grins, I thought, let me look at this stuff. What is? What are these things made out of? Well, it turns out that um, cans, these, these things here, are actually made from two different alloys. Uh, the bottom part of the can, the main part of the can, including the, the bottom, is made out of something called 3004, 3004. Uh, and that's what that is made out of. The top is made out of an alloy called 5182, a different alloy. The top has actually got a fairly high magnesium content, whereas the bottom does not. Uh, the other thing about these, both of these alloys, this one and this one, is very low silicon uh, content. So I thought, hmm, what if I melted down some cans? And I hate melting cans. Let me just say right now again, I hate melting cans. I melted six pounds of cans. I got 12 pounds of dross. You know the drill. If you you melted cans, you understand. But I thought, let me melt down a bunch of cans, cast something, and try to anodize it and see. So what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to cast uh, a coaster. This is uh, the coaster. Or is, let me find the coaster here. We're going to cast this coaster. And we're going to cast it in 319. And we're going to cast it in whatever we want to call this. Let's see, it was 3004, 5182. So let's call it... Let's call it uh, 
4,054 <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. This is, we're going to take cans, we're going to melt them down. We'll do the pours exactly the same. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time on the pours this time because we're really going to look at the anodization process here. I'm going to anodize them in the same bath at the same time with the same everything, right? They're not going to be, you can't say I did it this way one time and that way another time. Begin at the exact same time using the exact, everything's the same. And we're going to look at the results. Uh, interesting results. Interesting results. So let's get to the castings. Let's get to the anodization. And I'll come back and we'll wrap this thing up. Okay, as I said, we're going to really kind of focus on the anodization at the end here. But uh, just going to run through the casting process really quickly. I'm going to start off, I'm going to cast this thing in the cope. So I've got my uh, runner and my, the bottom half of my spin trap in the... Uh, in the drag, we're just going to riddle in some sand here. Got to make a riddle. I'm just using this screen now. I got to make one. As always, we're going to ram it up. I always ram from the outside and then come into the in inside. And then we'll finish it off with the uh, blunt end of the ramming tool. And we'll strike it off just to get it nice and clean. With that done, I'll go ahead and put the cope on and uh, go ahead and get all of our parts put in there. There's a pattern of our coaster along with the uh, the gate that's going to be in there. Both of those will be up in the cope. So the metal's going to flow across the runner, uh, fill the runner, come up into the gate, and then fill across into the part at a night that's the same level as the part. So essentially filling from the bottom up on the part. Get our tapered sprue in and our spin trap. And like before, we'll go ahead and uh, get our parting compound on there. Riddle in some sand, and then start ramming again. Ram from the outside in. Once we've got that first ram done, I'll go ahead and finish it off here with the blended again. Basically exactly the same process for the drag and for the cope. And I've always got to turn this around so I know where to cut my basin. You'd think after all this time I'd figure it out. But anyway, I want the basin uh, on that side of the sprue. I'd like to be able to see uh, the pour um, as it's going into the sprue. So I like that basin on that side. I'm not pouring, look, having to look over the crucible to get to it. Twist the sprue out. And we'll go ahead and get our, uh, our ridge cut into our offset pouring basin there. Okay, with our basin and ridge cut, we can go ahead and open this thing up. And start pulling parts out. Pretty happy that the pattern just falls out of the, the cope. That makes life so much easier. I always like to clean up the um, the mold a little bit with a brush, soft brush, just to make sure everything's the loose sand is taken out of that gate, and it's just it's just a nice clean thing. And we can go ahead and start blowing it out. It's really low air pressure here. And close it up. I always do a trial close um, just to knock any loose sand off the uh, off the mold. Open it back up. One more blowout. And we can get it closed up for the pour. And here we go. Uh, this would have been great if I had actually hit the basin. <laughs> I got it in there and we kept the sprue full, but God. Ah, there it is up and close. Up close and personal. A little slowed down. I just completely missed here. Completely missed. But we kept the uh, top of the basin full. We kept the sprue full. So we did okay. Open it up. See what we got. I always like to see a full burn there. And there's our part. We'll pull it out. Take a look at it here. Pretty clean. Get it focused. There we go. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Uh, this is the three. That was the 319. Right, we're going to mark it here at 319, so remember which which alloy we're, we're dealing with. I'm going to do exactly the same process again now with the cans. There you can see the, the parts are exactly the same. Um, we got the, the gate in the bottom and the drag, and then we got everything else up in the cope. So we'll get this, uh, we'll get this filled in, we'll get it rammed up, we'll get the basin cut, and we will be ready to pour. All right, we're done. We got everything cut, basin cut, everything's there. 
And I am using the cans this time. This is whatever that alloy is, this is cans. Go ahead and pour it in here. Much better aim this time, we fill the basin. Keep it full all the way to the top and we fill that sprue, yeah. <laughs> a little drip over the edge. There it is up close and slowed down a little bit for you. Pretty good pour. Nice and close to the basin, nice and close to the top of my cope. No splashing around, no dropping great distances. We kept the thing as full as we could keep it. And there we go. We'll get her opened up here. Again, I see that nice burn all the way across. We got a full pattern. You can see there's uh, the result of the wet sand. It's just not real smooth. Here it is. Again, up, up the front of it. Uh, it doesn't look terrible, but it, it could be. It could have been a lot better. The sand was just too coarse because it was too wet. All right, so I got them clean, cut off and cleaned up. I'm going to permanently mark <laughs> the 319 one here with a with a scribe in the back, a uh, cut in the back, because I don't think those letters are going to last through the anodization, anod whatever, the bath. They're going to come off. There they are again. Keep Remember what they look like. That's the 319. That's the cans. And this is my anodization. An I can't say that word. Anodization, 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 something. I'm gonna gonna go ahead and uh, clip the wires uh, on there so that they're, they're making good contact. Got a sodium bisulfate um, bath. Two aluminum donors. Those are my anodes. You can see we just turned the power on. Look at the look at that. That's the uh, the cans, and then this one down here are this the 319. Look at the difference in the reaction. The 319 is bubbling like crazy, and the cans are not. And the donor, um, the anodes are bubbling away too. It's kind of weird. So they're done. They've been in there for an hour. I'm going to go ahead and just rinse them off with some clean water. You can see the difference now between that's the 319 right there uh, and Mark. Uh, look how much darker it is. It's got a de definitely got a darker finish than the um, the cans. That's the cans. Now the two ingots that you see there are the cans up on top, and the uh, 319 is right next to the the two coasters. And one of the ways you can check for your anod anodization working is. You should not have continuity across an anodized surface. It is an oxidized surface, uh, and it should not um, should not show continuity. And here you can see on the ingot, I have continuity uh, on both of those guys. Yep. We'll move over here to the um, that's the cans, and yeah, and that's uh, the three nineteen. Just to show that I did have with an unanodized aluminum, I do have continuity. Now, when I put the con the meter on. Uh, this coaster, the anodized, the can coaster, I do not have continuity. It tells me I've got an oxide layer that's that's on there. But look what happens here. I have continuity across the 319. It's as if it did not put that layer of aluminum oxide on there. Back here to the cans, no continuity. So I think that's fascinating. Fascinating, right? Here's Here they are again. You can see this one's dark. This was the 319. This one's not dark. This is the uh, these are the cans. This is not conductive, meaning that there's prob there's an oxide layer. I assume there's an oxide layer on this thing. This is conductive, which tells me there's probably not an oxide layer on this thing. Question is, what's on this? This feels so cool. It feels so. It's almost like silk. It feels really really nice. I love the color. I love what it did. What the heck happened? What what is that process? What what did I do? That's the question to you guys. If you know the answer, put it in the comments. Um, I would love to know. I, I but I love this. I'm going to do more things like this because I think they're just. I think it's a cool looking finish, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> anyway. That's it for me today. I hope you guys, 
But I hope you, I hope you have a great day. And I hope, I hope you're going to be a blessing to somebody. You're going to do something nice for somebody today. You're going to say something nice. You're going to give, give the old lady a parking spot. You're going to help hold a door for, you're going to do something nice for somebody. Do it. You guys have a great day.